honestly one of the most important tips find your confidence like you do the generic tips like oh you need a three ring binder like no baby that's that's not what i came here for i can't Hi guys, it's your girl Naima. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I am here with a junior guy. Everyone's junior year experience is different and I just actually finished my junior year last year. This upcoming back to school year, I will be a senior. So I was so ready to graduate y'all. I cannot stand high school and a lot of people say junior year is the hardest year and then there's a group of people who say junior year wasn't that hard but if you guys ask me junior year was definitely hard it was the hardest year that i've been through so far hopefully my senior year is not that bad hopefully after you guys watch this video you can learn a few tips and tricks along the way which will make your junior year much easier so i definitely recommend you guys to stick it through through the whole video so you won't have a hard junior year like me because it was hard i feel like it just really comes down to the classes you take what friends you have me personally i took all ap classes I did two sports, so I was a year-round student athlete. I was in different clubs, like I had to have been in like five clubs, and a lot of people who agreed with me that junior year was the hardest year was people who were in the same classes in the same clubs that I was in. And I had a few friends who said that their junior year was the easiest year, but honestly their schedule was not as challenging as mine. They didn't take the AP classes I took and they weren't a year round student athlete. But since we're already on the AP subject, we're just gonna start with that. Junior year is usually the year where most students dive into the AP world, which is a scary world. And so during my junior year, I took my first, it was my first time ever taking AP classes. I took three AP classes. I took A Push, which is AP US History. I took AP Lang and I took AP, AP Chem. I do recommend you guys take AP classes. When I was signing up for my schedule, there was actually a lot of people trying to persuade me to not take AP classes. They were like, oh, you're just wasting your time. You're gonna be so stressed out. It's gonna be a lot of work. And it is going to be a lot of work. I'm not gonna lie to you guys about that. But looking back today, it is definitely worth it. And I will be taking AP classes again my 12th grade year. The reason I say taking AP classes is definitely worth it is because it really gives you a taste of how it's going to be in college. And even if you don't pass the AP exam at the end of the year, no matter what, as long as you take the exam and you finish the exam, you automatically get a GPA boost. Honors class boosts your GPA, boost the grade halfway, but AP classes is boosted by a whole letter grade. So if you make a B in an AP class at the end of the year, it'll actually count as the A. And a lot of classes also take AP credits as college credits if you pass your exam and you score high enough. Unfortunately, on my AP Chem exam, I made a three. Well, it's qualifying, so I'm not gonna say um unfortunately but the highest you can make is a five and the lowest you can make is a one i qualified on two of three of my exams so yeah. <laughs> depending on what college i go to those exams those subjects that i did qualify in i could possibly earn college credits and i can skip some of those lessons in but even if I do go to a college where they don't accept threes, because some colleges don't accept threes, some colleges only accept fours and fives, it's totally fine because when you go to college, you're basically going to be doing the same exact work over again. So it's going to be very easy for me. Like looking back now, a lot of people say AP Chem and chemistry in general is a hard subject, but for me, chemistry is very easy now. 
And also taking AP Rank and it pushed, it really did help me with my writing skills and writing essays. Cause when you go to college, you're gonna be writing essays. But a lot of my friends who didn't take AP classes, of course, have written essays, but it wasn't on the same caliber as my essays were written. I was writing three to four essays in literally one hour. And not just three to four essays in one hour, but I can write three quality essays in an hour, which will be a very highly valuable trait to have in college. Not only that, but I do give myself a pat on the back because that was my first time taking AP classes. Oh my God, it's so great. Of course, I'm going to be taking AP classes again. And now I have a feel for actually knowing how to go in the classroom and put in the work and I know what to expect now. So I do feel like when AP exam rolls back around, my scores definitely will be higher. So now that I've gotten all the benefits of taking AP classes out the way, I'm going to be telling you guys how to actually tackle it once you're put in the environment to actually take those courses. In order to do this, I feel like you guys need to have a strong, what is it called? Like, you need to be organized. Like, you need to plan everything out. Make sure you turn your work in on time because it's going to be a lot of work and it can be stressful, especially if you're taking multiple AP classes. But even if it does feel stressful, because there were days when I was, I was literally at night time, I was like, oh my God, how am I going to do all of this? Like, what? But then I sat back and I remember, okay, Naima, this is your first time taking AP classes. It is okay. You're doing what a lot of people aren't. Therefore, don't stress yourself out about it, okay? These classes are hard, but just do your best. And if there are days when you really need to take that break and you really just need a day off, that's fine. Take it. There were literally days when I said, okay, I've done so much. I just cannot do this worksheet right now. Even if it was like, what, 10 points off for a lay fee? Okay, I'm just gonna have to take those 10 points off because I'm a human first before I'm a student. I always prioritize my mental health and that is what really helped me finish off the school year strong. The thing with that is you guys need to be you guys need to make sure you know the difference between prioritizing your mental health and just being flat out lazy. There's a fine line and it's up to you to make sure you know where you lay. Even though I had days when I said, okay, I just cannot do this. It was because I generally could not. If I did, I was gonna crash out and burn out. So I literally had to take that day off and just try again the next day. And that's totally fine. Do not feel like a failure if you have to do that. Also, as I mentioned before, I was a student athlete. I participated in track and um, cross country. And with track, I did indoor, outdoor, and AAU. And then on top of that, I did cross country. So I was basically an athlete literally the whole year round. I didn't get no break. And for anyone who knows, I feel like this is with any sport, but with track and field and cross country especially, you have to be very disciplined and it takes a lot out of you mentally. It's a very mental sport. Anyone who knows anything about track, they will tell you that it's 90% mental and 10% physical. The same with cross country. So being a student athlete did play a huge role in my experience of my junior year. I'm not gonna get too much into everything, but if you guys wanna know the deets after this video, you can go check out my track horror story video and it'll explain everything. But during my track season, I really did go through a lot um, with my coach and with my teammates. So it just took a very big toll on me, <laughs> honestly. One thing about me is like, I feel like I kind of bottle up my emotions and I don't tell nobody about what I'm really going through really. I just kind of vent to myself and I know that's totally unhealthy, but a lot of the issues and stuff that I was going through, I really just kept that to myself. Like I didn't tell nobody about it for real and how it really made me feel deep down. So 
I wouldn't say I was really depressed, but I was recovering from it. I was learning how to really just be my own person because there was a lot of people who didn't like me. And that's that's the reality. Not everyone's gonna like me and I'm okay with that. But, you know, I had to learn how to stand on, well, I already knew how to stand on my own, but that's what I was doing. I was standing on my own, I was at practices, I was literally in my own bubble, like, literally, I was just talking to nobody, I was literally just in my own soul. And sometimes that can be lonely, but I'd rather be lonely and be true to myself than to be not lonely and have to change myself to fit in with whoever is around me. Never change yourselves. Ever. like always stay true who you are because if you change yourself at the end of the day <laughs> baby I don't even know what to say to you but you just shouldn't do that like always stay true to yourself and who you are as a person because you changing yourself is not gonna make you no happier you probably gonna feel happier in that moment but it's really just gonna do more damage than good in the long run and you're gonna see that the wrong crowd can really change you change who you are as a person like you'll start picking up traits that you never even had before and they can be bad traits and you don't want that try to have at least one friend one true friend because i did have three or four people that i can actually truly call my friend and even if you don't have no friend baby you don't need no friend god is your friend okay but i will say if you're going to be there are people you could talk to i ain't gonna lie a lot of time them um school therapists or whatever they be calling them they don't be doing it for real at least in my experience i can't speak for every school but from my experiences they don't do nothing but if you feel comfortable with talking to school therapists and um, if you have good ones, definitely talk to them about what you're going through. Or it don't even have to be them. It could just be your friend or your mom or your dad or even when you're close to. So you don't keep those emotions bottled up. Because at the end of the day, like I say, you need to prioritize your mental health. Your mental health is literally going to be the key to getting through your junior year. You need to prioritize your mental health, baby. Prioritize it. Another thing that i do recommend like i said i was in a lot of clubs and through those clubs i was able to meet people and i did a lot of things that i enjoy doing so i do recommend getting into an extracurricular or a club or a hobby it doesn't even have to be in school it could be outside of school like i told you guys i did aau track i still do aau track i love aau track i wouldn't trade it for anything in the world when i go to aau track practice i remember why i started track in the first place aau track across country is really the things that motivated me like when i did cross country that i really stepped outside my comfort zone because as y'all know cross country is like for distance runners and at the time before, I was strictly only doing the 800. So running the 800, running the 5 is a big difference. And I was the only black person on the team, y'all. <laughs> I really stepped out of my comfort zone, but I loved it. The environment was like so therapeutic for me. My coach cared about me. My teammates were so kind to me. Even the people at the cross country meets, it was just filled with such positive energy that i really needed at that time so find hobbies it doesn't even have to be a sport like i also took up sewing like i have a sewing machine at home and i like to sew and make clothes because i'm into fashion i just love doing things that are therapeutic for me because they help me calm myself when i'm stressed out or if i'm bored or anything so you guys definitely need to take up hobbies they will help you so much take up hobbies baby hobbies the next thing i say for junior year in junior year most people are like what 16 17 i was 16. i was 16 my junior year most people are just now getting cars or whatever and so if you're in a situation so where you could get a car i definitely recommend you guys getting a car and getting your driver's license and things like that because nobody wants to ride a funky bus every day because when you're on a bus it's just so many people and there could be people you don't like there could be people you like you can have an evil bus driver you can have a nice bus driver it's just so many energies 
mixed in like one spot. And of course it's like that in the classroom, but early in the morning at 6 a.m., that's the first thing you wanna do. Not really, not for me anyways. I have a car, so when I wake up in the morning, I could drive myself to school. I could start my day off however I wanna start my day off. I don't even have to wake up that early because I'm not on a bus driver schedule, I'm on my schedule. So it really just sets nice mood and nice tone to my day. Like how I choose to start my day is how I choose to start my day and nobody else. And if you're not able to get a car, baby, don't worry about it. Don't stress yourself out, okay, you're in high school. You have all your life to get a car. If you can't get a car, like, I know a lot of people, they like try to judge people off of what kind of car they got. Maybe a car is a car. As long as you can drive, it can move the streets from point A to point B, is good enough. Cause a lot of people don't even have that. So when you do get a car, if it isn't the best car with society needs to be the best car or the acceptable car, don't worry about that because anyone who's judging you for what car you drive is miserable and they need to get their life together because it's never that deep. And if you don't have a car, just keep your head up, baby. You're going to get one of the windows. Just keep working, keep praying, and stay faithful. Now, I, I feel like a lot of people skip this, but this is honestly one of the most important tips in this video and that is to find your confidence like we're in high school we're high schoolers there are going to be so many people judging you and sometimes i feel like when we think people are judging us nine times out of ten they really don't be caring i mean they might look your way but it could be for anything it could be because they think you got a cute shirt on because they think your hair is nice they like your glasses they like the way you laugh the way you talk who knows? But us as humans, we automatically overthink. So you might think they're thinking something bad when they wouldn't really think it's something good. But yeah, really work on your self-love and your confidence because it is shown that a lot of people start dealing, developing confidence issues during middle school and high school and then they carry you into college and then adult life. And you just don't want that. At the end of the day, everybody is beautiful beautiful in their own ways it don't matter what the um beauty standards of the world is no matter your skin tone how you look the way you talk no none of that matters everybody was built created by the same person we were all created by the same person in the same way so nobody is better than anyone and anyone who's telling you otherwise they're just miserable and they're dealing with issues on their own so don't even worry about none of that and there are ways to like build your self-confidence you could try a new style change your hair do anything like really just explore yourself and who you are as a person explore who you are as a person and your beliefs and your identity and just really gain your knowledge and expand your knowledge y'all because knowledge is really power and when people used to say this, I was like, okay, yeah, knowledge is good, like, but I thought they were saying that because, like, oh, just go to college and get a degree and be successful. When, like, you don't even have to go to college to be successful, really. But that's not why they say that. They say knowledge is power because it builds your intellect. The more you train your brain to work under certain circumstances, like hard circumstances, and you put your brain and you build your critical thinking it expands the way you view things like it builds your intellect and that reflects your spirit because you start to learn how to build your own beliefs and your own ideas and you can create new things in your mind it's just a powerful thing it's not about being the best mathematician or the best scientist it's just about the fact that you're training your brain to be able to do great things and you can apply that to all aspects of your life so that's why you say knowledge is power you're building yourself if that makes sense all right y'all i'm so sorry for this chair squeaking throughout the video i'm actually not at home i'm in germany y'all i have went on vacation i went to germany i went to paris i went to czech republic i went to Prague. And I just been having so much fun. And actually, I did say some other stuff, but the footage got deleted somehow. I don't know, and I can't really remember what I said. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm just gonna go ahead and end it here. So yeah, 
If there was anything I missed in the comments, definitely let me know because I didn't do the generic tips like, oh, you need a three ring binder. Like, no, baby, that's that's not what I came here for. I came for the deep stuff, you know, to really have a good year and to really like upgrade and level yourself up your junior year. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. I'm sorry y'all but I've been recording for about an hour and because when y'all when I be talking I be getting so passionate like when I speak I speak passionately like things just flow. So honestly I can't just set the camera back up and reset what I said because y'all I don't remember. I, I genuinely don't remember. I'm sorry. <laughs> So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, comment, and subscribe. We're on the road to 1K and we're so freaking close. We're at 900 subscribers. So definitely subscribe.